Hi everyone, hope you're doing well. Today we are starting solutions notes. Now, if you read my to-do list, I did say in the to-do list, I suggest you go to this module, open this PowerPoint and take these notes first. There are a lot of notes to take today and it's going to be a pain if you have to pause the video a ton. It would be best just to get your notes written down and then watch this video so you can highlight um, and write down the extra things that I say and draw in the video. That is my suggestion. Do it, don't do it, doesn't really matter to me. Just trying to help you out. So let's get started. Back to, we talked about this, I don't know, first six weeks, homogeneous mixtures versus heterogeneous mixtures. A homogeneous mixture has the same uniform appearance and composition throughout. It looks the same throughout and it's made up this, of the same thing throughout. Um, and it might exist as a gas, liquid, or a solid, just depends. Example, water. Water is a homogeneous mixture because believe it or not, the water from your sink is not just water. That's why it's a mixture, but you would never know and there are equal parts of fluorine ions and whatever ions are in our water throughout your tap water. Versus a heterogeneous mixture, it's not uniform in composition. You can tell there are different parts to it. Example, Italian dressing. If you have Italian dressing in your fridge, you can tell there's tomatoes, little onion pieces, whatever makes it up. All right, so solutions, the unit that we are in. A solution is a homogeneous mixture of two or more substances. So all of our solutions are homogeneous, not heterogeneous. They all look like there's just one thing in it, but they're not. And a solution has two parts. It has a solute, which is the substance that gets dissolved in the solution, and it has a solvent, which is the thing that does the dissolving. Now, most of the time, it, our solvent is water. Water is kind of known as the universal solvent. Water does not dissolve everything, but it dissolves a lot of things. And so every solution has a solute and a solvent. Solute gets dissolved. Solvent is the one that does the dissolving. Usually it's water. So, um, okay. If we were making Kool-Aid, what would be our solute, our solvent, and the whole solution? Well, our solute is Kool-Aid. Kool-Aid gets dissolved. Solvent, water. Kool-Aid gets dissolved in water. And then the solution is what you actually drink. And looking at that solution, can you tell that there's sugar in red dye number six or whatever it is? I mean, you know because you're a human, but looking at it, you can't tell that there's something, there's other stuff in it. It just looks like a red liquid. That's a solution. Properties of solutions. Solutions are transparent. Light passes through them without any scattering. Solutions ha can have solutes, atoms, ions, molecules that are relatively small. 0.1 to 2 nanometers in diameter. So very small things dissolved inside of it. And solutions cannot be filtered because the pieces are so small, but they can be separated through distillation. Distillation is if I have something with stuff inside of it, boil the water. And then your sugar or whatever is left in the pot. That's distillation. Okay, so we do have two types of heterogeneous mixtures that a lot of people think are solutions, except they're not. One of them are called suspensions. A suspension is a heterogeneous mixture that has particles with a diameter greater than 1,000 nanometers. Remember, we just said solutions were 0.1 to 2 nanometers. So suspensions have really big pieces, um, and the particles can separate very easily and you can filter suspensions. So Italian dressing is a homogeneous mixture and it's a suspension. Those are big particles in there. We can see them. The other type of heterogeneous mixture that looks like a solution is called a colloid. And colloids contain particles that are intermediate in size. So not a thousand nanometers, but not one in between 
one nanometer to a thousand. And they, but they, these particles remain evenly distributed. They don't settle like a suspension. The suspension was the Italian dressing. Those pieces separate out in a colloid, they won't. And so some examples, jello and milk, those are not solutions. They are hetero mixtures. And they are colloids. So not solutions. Milk is not considered a solution because it doesn't meet those properties that we said solutions have. Okay. And so the difference, suspensions, the pieces will separate as we said, but in colloids and solutions, they will not. And then colloids can be distinguished or determined that it's not a solution through something called the Tyndall effect. And the Tyndall effect is essentially this picture down here. Now, looking at it, we've got light and it's going through two liquids. The first one, the light goes through. You can't see the light in that liquid. But in the second one, I can see the light in that liquid. And so that's the difference between a color and a solution. So why does that happen? Why can I not see the light in this one, but I can see it in this one? Because the Tyndall effect, which says a beam of light that passes through an actual solution, like air, water, is not visible. But if it goes through a colloid, like if it's really foggy air, milk, because there are larger particles, the light beam gets reflected and is visible. And so the difference, a suspension, the particles settle. It's like Italian dressing. There's really big pieces in it. So you know that's not a solution. If you were to determine if something's a colloid or a solution, shine a light. The one where there is no light is the solution. The one with the light is the colloid because the colloid has the larger pieces that reflect the light and get bounced around. Aqueous solutions. We've been talking about aqueous solutions for, I don't know, since January. And those are solutions in which water is the solvent. Not everything is an aqueous solution. Water isn't always the solvent, but water is a pretty common solvent. And so we say something is miscible. It's a vocabulary word you should know, which means the liquid will dissolve in another liquid. If I say something is miscible, that means it can dissolve versus like vinegar and water versus if something is immiscible, they don't dissolve like oil and water do not mix. They won't dissolve one another. So miscible, they dissolve. Immiscible, they don't dissolve. And how do we determine what dissolves and what doesn't dissolve? There's a rule. Like dissolves like. You want to learn that rule or remember that. And what that means is a polar solvent will dissolve a polar solute. But a polar solvent cannot dissolve a nonpolar solute. So like dissolves like. If your solvent is polar, it will dissolve polar solutes. And then just the opposite is true. A nonpolar solvent can dissolve a nonpolar solute. But the nonpolar solvent cannot dissolve a polar solute. So like dissolves like. If it's polar, it can dissolve polar things. If it's nonpolar, it can dissolve nonpolar things. So polarity is kind of a big deal. If you didn't learn before how to determine if something is polar or not, go back, watch some videos, get on YouTube, maybe watch some other videos because it's going to continue to be a problem for you. Okay, so water. Water is polar. Water is the most common solvent. Water can dissolve most ionic compounds and polar covalent compounds. And so you might want to make a note of that. Um, ionic compounds go with polar covalent compounds because ionic compounds have charges. And if something's polar, it has a partial charge. 
So water can dissolve most ionic things and polar covalent things. Water cannot dissolve nonpolar things like oil because it doesn't fit the like dissolves like rule. So some examples, oil and water don't mix. That word again was immiscible. They are immiscible because oil is nonpolar. Water is polar. They don't mix. Um, butter. I only thought about this example because the rules I made today for Easter, I had to use this little brush and um, put butter I don't know what do you call brush butter onto the rolls. They were super good in case you were wondering. But guess what? When I put my brush that was covered in butter in the sink and tried to rinse it off with water, nothing happened. It wouldn't wash off the butter. It was nasty. I had to use soap. Why? Because butter is nonpolar. The soap can dissolve my butter, but the water will not. You need something to break the nonpolar molecules off. And so just a little bit about soap in case you were wondering, I'm sure you were. Soap actually has polar and nonpolar parts to it. So that's why soap can dissolve everything. So this is a soap molecule right here. It's got the polar top. And this is actually what our cell membranes look like. So this part is polar. Um, this will attract polar molecules. Um, like water, and then this big long hydrocarbon tail is nonpolar. And so this part can dissolve and break apart my butter, my oil, anything nonpolar. And so that's why soap is pretty cool. Soap can dissolve anything you want because it's got both sides to it. Okay. So moving along, we're going to talk about factors that affect the rate of dissolution. Um, dissolution, you might be looking at that thinking, I don't know what that means. Dissolving. So things that can make dissolving solutes go faster. So stirring. I'm sure you never thought of that before. If you stir something, the solute dissolves faster. Crazy. Particle size, smaller particle sizes increases the surface area and it dissolves faster because the water is able to get around more of the solute versus if you have a big chunk of something and you put it in water, it's going to take longer. Something which if we were in class, actually we do a little lab, I make you dissolve sugar cubes, which are big cubes, and then like sugar, normal sugar, like if you go get sugar, um, sugar grains, and guess which one dissolves faster? Obviously the sugar grains. And I usually let you eat sugar cubes, but coronavirus, sorry. Temperature, also I'm sure you have figured this out before in your life. If you heat something up, the solute will dissolve faster, except I don't think any of you have ever tried to dissolve gases before. That doesn't work with gases because what happens as you increase the temperature of a gas? Temperature is kinetic energy. And gases already move fast. If, you know, they're bouncing around. If I increase the temperature, my gas just moves faster. It's not going to dissolve any easier because it's bouncing around and moving faster versus solutes, which are usually solid, when you increase their temperature, they become a liquid, which then is much easier to dissolve in water, a liquid. So temperature, you don't want to increase the temperature to dissolve a gas, but for normal solid solutes, you do. And then the last one, pressure. This is for gases only. If you increase the pressure, of a gas that will increase how many collisions occur and then it will dissolve faster and so soda I don't know if you knew this or not but soda you say it's carbonated because it has carbon dioxide 
and they get it in there because they trap it in the little can. It's under a ton of pressure. When you open it or when you open your bottle, there's less pressure. It becomes flat or not dissolved. The CO2 leaves the solution. So if you want to dissolve a gas, you need to increase pressure and decrease the temperature. And then last but not least, Henry's Law. Henry's Law states the solubility of a gas in a liquid is directly proportional to the partial pressure of the gas on the surface of the liquid. Okay, let's look at that again. Solubility, how much you can dissolve a gas in a liquid. So I want to dissolve a gas in a liquid. How much? is directly proportional to the pressure of the gas. So that means the more pressure of the on the gas, the more I can dissolve. And I write slow. And I feel like this little picture does a good job of showing it. So solubility of a gas, how much gas can be dissolved, depends on the pressure. The more pressure, the more gas molecules can dissolve in a solution. And so this is a lot of notes today. This is going to be a lot of memorizing or flipping back through just some tricky things. You're going to go to Canvas now and take a practice quiz that is going over some of these notes.